Ah, Tronxy or Tron XY, the company whose name we don't quite know how to pronounce has been a long favorite of mine in the budget 3D printer game. They were the first to have the balls, I suppose, to release a sub $200 3D printer kit that actually worked well enough for me to recommend on this channel, the Tronxy X1. So when they reached out to me about their Ender 3 style 3D printer, the XY2, I must admit, I assumed it would be the same, but with a more budget feel. Yeah. I was wrong. The XY2 might just be the most suitable beginner's 3D printer of its class yet, but it certainly isn't perfect. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse, jumping straight into the specs. The Tronxy XY2 has almost identical printing specs on the surface to the Creality Ender 3. Same print volume of 220 by 220 with a supposed 10 millimeter extra Z height at 260 millimeters. And the extruded design is a carbon copy of the Ender 3 and Creality machines in general. It's Bowden with the PTFE extending all the way into the nozzle and hot end. The design also uses V rollers in aluminum V slot extrusion and so far pretty much same as Ender 3. However, from this point, things start to change. The XY2 has a color touch screen off to the side and it's quite decent with careful consideration to the small details such as loading and unloading filament. Like the routine will actually extrude a bit of filament quickly and then quickly retract and then pull it out instead of just trying to pull it out continuously, which usually leads to a plug in the Bowden tube, so that's clever and appreciated. What I don't appreciate is the micro SD card, but hey, everyone seems to be doing it. And if that's the only way they can achieve the price point, then fine, I'll suck it up. It also comes with this thing, a filament runout sensor. Machines are starting to ship with this now more and more, and it's a nice cheap insurance to running out of filament mid print. But don't bet the house on this sensor. It's just a dumb micro switch in a housing. So if your filament strips and jams, but doesn't run out like happened to me here, then it won't know or care and your print will still fail. For some reason, the GearBest listing has it as a AC heated bed, which it definitely doesn't have. It's DC, but that's what I prefer on a machine at this price point. And something that Creality definitely has them licked with is the print surface. Come on guys, it's not 2016, stop shipping with these poor quality imitation build tech surfaces. Uh, okay, <laughs> look, honestly, it does work better than many I've tested in the past. If your bed level is perfect, maybe a little bit closer than normal, you'll get good adhesion, but there's just something about having to pop prints off with something like this that I really disagree with. They give really quickly and it's terrifying. So really I would replace this with like something like the easy peelsy magnetic print surface or something that can be removed or maybe even just glass where it just pops off when it cools down. Talking about leveling though, it is just manual bed leveling with four points and this plate seems pretty flat though. I'm not sure if there's a few high spots because of the surface on top or because of the plate, but it's pretty much okay. I can print the whole volume. The biggest difference between this machine and most other Ender 3 style printers on the market though, it comes almost fully assembled right out of the box. Yeah, basically like a CR10. You bolt the gantry into place, attach the wires and control box, and you're good to go. Now, putting the wires in place is a bit choose your own adventure. Just make sure there's enough room for them not to get stuck or kink and you should be fine. But yeah, just uh, that's probably my only complaint there. There's no real guidance for that. Anyway, let's get into the printing. The demo print was done in the orange fluoro PLA it came with. It had just a little bit of a sample and that sample did what samples generally do. It completely tangled and stuffed up the last layer because remember, can't detect jams. However, the print does look pretty good. Weird test model though. I then moved on to ensuring I could print without stringing after the whole debacle of trying to print on these machines without stringing. And I've been using a new Cura profile and I had success, but what the hell is that? This print is bulging. Um, and I repeated it and it bulged repeatedly. <laughs> so what the heck is going on? There's not much info out there on the XY2. It's definitely not nearly as popular as the Ender 3. So it really could be anything in terms of troubleshooting. It could be 
a motor not having enough current, it could be a binding lead screw, it could be a poor quality coupler, lead screw could be misaligned, or what it turned out to be, could be those rollers. And here is the curse of oversight. Because the gantry was pre-assembled from factory, I didn't test the tension of the rollers. I did make sure they weren't too loose, because they weren't, but yeah, they were a bit too tight. And not only that, um, they seem to be poorer quality and maybe not fully concentric because even though I've loosened it up, when you move it up and down, it still kind of catches on points. Um, regardless, I increased the motor current in the Z and tried to loosen up the tension. And look, there might be other issues with the actual V-slot accuracy. I'm not sure, but I did start to get better prints, but they're still not perfect. I also want to mention the super weird belt paths that this machine and other ones use. I don't know why you people do this. It's like pushed in and out. It's not, it's not straight across, it's not parallel. So whatever, I wouldn't do it, but it seems to work. With all that out of the way though, I was confident to start with my barrage of test prints, beginning with my infamous tolerance and clearance gauge. Now, each segment of this gauge has a different wall-to-wall -wall distance. So it goes from 0.5 millimeters all the way down to 0.15 millimeters. And I generally print this model on a raft to ensure the bottom layer has the best chance it has to separate because like with build tack style surfaces, you generally wanna go nice and close and that can lead to a bit of elephant foot and uh, can bind them two together. So I did a raft and surprisingly, even though it took a little bit of convincing, the 0.2 and 0.15 clearances were free after I gave them a little bit of encouragement with a screwdriver. I think with a little bit of extra tweaking on the software, you might be able to get them to be free easier, but really that's the best I would expect out of a machine this price point, it's pretty incredible. And it's still better than what I got off my end of three. I couldn't get the 0.15 to work in my tests, but again, your mileage may vary. Time for some practical prints with these spur gears. And oh God, what is happening now? Admittedly, I had noticed that the step motor was clicking occasionally on the first and last layers of prints. And yeah, I suspect the current just isn't high enough to overcome the forces required for a Bowden when it's really pumping filament out. Also might be an issue with keeping up with the temperature in the hot end. So it resulted in two tests and both times the prints were, yeah, pretty badly under extruded in areas and in this case just completely failed. So I opened up the control box and printed this, which is just a big flat sheet of plastic. And I gradually tweaked the current on the extruder motor till it stopped clicking and I made sure it was getting enough uh, temperature as well, so printing at 200 degrees. So look, that's not something you can expect a newbie to do, which is why I hesitate to fully recommend this machine, but it did stop it clicking. And look, if you can't do that, you could just print slower or ramp your temperature up. I think that's the real limitation here because 60 millimeters per second with the full infills, pumping plastic out, it just couldn't quite keep up. And now because we have increased the current in the stepper drivers, they're gonna get much hotter, but thankfully Tronxy does have a fan in the back to keep things cool, which you can turn off from the front using this button which says light. But yeah, uh, don't do that. You might be tempted to because the whole machine when it's on is quite loud, but yeah, don't. With all things tweaked, the final gears did turn out quite good. Nice and solid, no more missed extrusion. Uh, a little bit of layer inaccuracy, which again, I've mentioned. And there's a little bit of elephant foot because you have to be nice and close to that surface to make sure it sticks. But these are perfectly usable and you could definitely use this machine for practical prototypes, as long as you allow a little bit of tolerance in your design. Next was to throw something a little bit bigger at this machine and that is the Triceratops skull from Scan the World. And that's found on my mini factory. It's one of my favorite difficult prints because it needs a ton of support material underneath it and printers can occasionally knock this over and result in the print failing. The print was going all night and I came back to it in the morning to just see it finish. Gorgeous. This print and the filament does a really good job at hiding defects. Now I am being very picky. Most people would be absolutely stoked with this print, but there is some layer inaccuracy, probably because of the rollers again. And I'm not sure if there's some extrusion uh, inaccuracies where it might have under or over extruded, but it's definitely better than uh, this one where that's been fixed. And something I completely forgotten about with Cura is the support material generation. Uh, yeah, it's sharp and it's everywhere. So it did clean up pretty easily. I still got a bit here, 
but um, be careful guys, it's razor sharp when you're removing it, but it does actually come off, which is nice. So you can use supports on this machine quite confidently out of Cura and get really good complicated prints. If you do have a power cut, this machine does have power recovery to help you recover the print, though you will still have a fairly obvious seam because it doesn't move the nozzle out of the way after the power cut, fair enough but it is a handy feature if you do have that fairly often where you live. But anyway, conclusion time. Why can't it ever be easy? This thing is almost perfect for a beginner. And at the price point of $195 US on flash sale, it's a little bit cheaper even than the Ender 3 with many additional features. You could pick up a few and populate an entire library or maker space with a ton of 3D printing capability. And the Ender 3, while not a true parts kit, it does come with the hard parts pre-assembled. This thing comes with two main components. It's basically a CR10 for a way lower price point. And it has the filament sensor and yeah, but look, the rollers really let this down. I don't know exactly what is going on and what's lower quality, but I suspect that the rollers and extrusion are where Chonksy saved a bit of money compared to Creality, and it really does reflect, in my prints anyway, on the actual surface quality, whereas the accuracy of the layers on the Ender 3 were much better in my tests. You'll need to do yourself a favor and pick up a sheet of Easy Peelsy or maybe even glass instead of this Biltac surface because even though it does work, um, it even lifts off the logo and paint onto the bottom of parts, like stamp them. It's really funny. So yeah, that's pretty poor quality. And of course I had the issue with the extrusion and the extruder gear skipping and, and losing steps because it didn't have enough current, but it's diffi difficult to complain too much about that because they're likely tweaked by hand in the factory. And in my experience with these companies, it's probably already fixed and it's, it is easy to do. And like I said, you could slow the print speed down. But yeah, having to crack open the electronics is like an instant fail for me on recommending a printer to beginners. So you could print slower, you could print with higher temperature, but I don't want people to be cracking open the box if you don't know what you're doing because it's very easy to stuff it up. It's very tightly packed in there. And a beginner just shouldn't have to do that at any price point. And on that note, quality control is always a bit of a pot shot with these budget printers, so your results will probably vary. <laughs> So please keep that in mind. It is a very low cost printer and I have been very impressed with it overall. Uh, but if you need a real, real warranty, get a better machine with a higher price out of a local reputable supplier. So a very big thanks to Tronxy, Tronx Y for sending this machine across to me to test out and present my findings to you guys. As always, this has been my own personal opinion and no money has changed hands. And if you wanna grab one of these for yourself, you can find two links below. One is an affiliate link where I get a small cut if you buy one, and the other is just a standard link. Which one you use is totally up to you. But either way, keep in mind, as of right now, start of February, it's Chinese New Year, so expect delays regardless of which link you use. If you enjoyed this video, then maybe consider subscribing here on Makers Muse as my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I'd love to have you on board. I have one more Ender 3 style machine to review, the XVCO Pioneer. This bad boy, which will be reviewed very shortly. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. I just said that twice. I don't care. Catch you later, guys. Bye.